D-rings and welding them to stuff. This is, as one can imagine, not exactly an exact science, but it's something that I've been doing for seven, eight years at this point in time. And while it is a very simple task, like most things, it's a little more complicated than it looks at first. And I have procured a number of tips which I wanna share with you guys. First and foremost, know your limits and do this at your own risk. Welding D-rings to things which are going to hold potentially thousands of pounds of force is not a beginner project and uh, make sure you really know what you're doing. I would recommend you take a couple classes before you embark on something like this because it is a pretty simple task, but you have to keep in mind, if you have thousands of pounds hanging on to one of these things and a weld breaks, it's gonna go flying and kill someone downrange. It's gonna be really, really bad. So. Uh, with that disclaimer aside, the whole do it at your own risk thing, here's your first lesson. Do not go to your favorite local farm supply store or whatever and buy these things because they're very expensive. I think locally these cost four or five dollars, something along those lines. If you're willing to buy them a dozen at a time or however many is in this thing, you can get them for like two dollars or two fifty or so a piece. It is infinitely cheaper. They do not go bad. They're really nice to keep around. My advice is if this is something you're gonna be doing any real quantity of, that you just order a big fat envelope of these things and just keep them ready to roll. Next lesson, we do not simply take D-rings and weld them right to stuff. Like we're gonna be welding some onto this uh, truck flatbed here. We do not simply take this and put it on like such. The better way to do this is to take a piece of scrap metal, a piece of plate and we weld the D-ring to that. Now you ask why this is, and it's because this plate, which is only a quarter of an inch thick, so it doesn't sound like much, what this is going to do is when something is really pulling hard on this D-ring, now we're not pulling on a tiny little area of the truck's bed like this. We are pulling on this huge area, and structurally it's a lot easier on whatever you attach this D-ring to. And this truck bed is only like an eighth inch thick, which is weird because I think part of it up there is like three sixteenths, but it's made out of several sheets. I, I don't know, I didn't build this thing. Uh, but whatever the case, it's not really all that thick of material. And even if what you're welding to is, this still gives you a nice mechanical advantage on whatever you're pulling on. So definitely weld to something like this. Now, if you really want to go all out, what I would recommend is you make a circular plate and uh, that way, you're pretty much guaranteed an even distribution of force without force concentrating around any of these corners. Now, on a, on a welding note, when you go to attach these plates, it's really important with stuff like this that you try to weld around the corners because, as some of you guys know, welds normally start to crack at the end of the weld or at the beginning of the weld, and from a structural standpoint, things usually start to crack out around the corners. So therefore, if you weld starting and stopping at each corner, you're kind of setting yourself up for failure. But if you can start here and make it around this corner, and uh, maybe even the next corner around that, but you don't stop and start on any corners, you're left with a much stronger finished piece. And it looks better, and if you ever want to get into pipe welding or structural fabrication with round tube or anything along those lines, being able to weld around corners on a flat square surface like this is a really good primer for that. Now the last tip I'll give you guys is, and this is something I kind of had to learn the hard way, you do not want to weld D-rings right to the front of something. Like this, uh, this trailer has this headboard thing here, and uh, so it's pretty logical to conclude that whatever I'm hauling is going to end buttered up against this. Therefore, if we put the D-ring like right here, then we'll only be able to go over the first like inch or two of the load. But if we set this back six or eight inches, so it's about here, then we don't have to worry about the chain, you know, or the strap or whatever it is going off the front of whatever is strapped down quite as easily. And it's a much better place to put the chain than right at the very end of whatever the object is. So. On this, I'm going to install eight D-rings. I'm gonna put the first set uh, probably about this far back. The second set, if this is, uh, this is the halfway point here because there's three four-foot sheets material. There's one, two, and three. So this is the halfway point I'll put. The second set right about here. The third set around here somewhere. And the final set, Again, six or eight inches from the end of this bed. Now, final note that I'll add is if you want well-non D-rings, then do yourself and all the world a favor and buy some weld-on D-rings. As mentioned, they're not exactly expensive 
And the alternative that some people do is they will go out and they will buy these bolt-on D-rings and they simply weld them to stuff. And there's a number of problems with this. The main one is it looks terrible. I mean, this, it's all kind of like rusted together is one thing, so it, it doesn't look that bad. But you see something like this that's freshly added. It's just, it looks amateurish, it looks hackish. Uh, the other thing is, it's not especially strong. These were never meant to be welded to, and there's a gaping hole in the middle where you're supposed to run a carriage bolt. And uh, so, you know, either you weld around the gaping hole, and then you're left with this giant weak spot, or you weld up the giant hole, and then you're left with a structural weak point, which looks almost as bad as not welding it at all. And again, like I said, you can get these D-rings for like $250 a piece on, on the internet if you're willing to buy them 10, 12 at a time. Really no excuse not to use the proper tool for this, or the proper supply as it were. Anyway, those are just a few things that I've learned doing this, and I guess now it's time to actually weld these things into place on this trailer. All right, so I've now got all eight of these and their plates welded on. Well, really, I only, I only ended up using seven out of eight of those square plates I cut because the eighth D-ring goes on this huge patch thing that I welded on yesterday, thus an additional plate is unnecessary. Uh, but behold, they are finished. I'm really happy with the way these came out. It is not uh, exactly rocket science, but as with most things, there is a little more to it than initially meets the eye. And I will now give you some other advice on doing these things because uh, as mentioned, it's a lot of force on a pretty small area and there's, you know, you need to be sure that these welds are going to hold. Now, back when I was still reading comments, I used to kind of hold back on giving my real thoughts on a lot of things because I knew that I was going to hear from every uh, keyboard commando who's ever searched welding in the search bar since the invention of AOL dial-up whenever I said anything. Uh, but now I don't, so <laughs> here is my professional opinion on all of, on, you know, the proper way to weld these onto things, because uh, I don't want to talk myself up, but I do have nine years experience in welding, and I went to a very good welding school, and most people who just, I do this with blah, 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 don't. I'm not saying it can't be done any, any other way, but uh, do not do this with a 110 volt MIG welder. You know, these loops over the D-rings, whatever they're technically called, that's at least 516 steel. You're usually tying into quarter inch material. On these, uh, I actually just put one pass on these base plates because we're welding to eighth inch thick material and the cross section of this is uh, over an eighth of an inch just with one single pass of eighth inch 7018. However, normally if this was like a 3 8 piece of machinery or something, I would weld multiple passes around this. But like I said, we're over an eighth of an inch so it's more than sufficient. Uh, but where I was going with that is do, if you have a 110 volt welder, don't just don't do this. Find another machine or like borrow one or wait till you have one because they just don't have enough oomph behind them to tie into material that's this thick. Likewise, uh, do not weld these with 6010, 6011, 6013, 7014, or 7024. Uh, if you're going to stick weld them, 7018 is really the only way to go. As uh, compared to the aforementioned, it has much better mechanical properties. It's a lot more ductile. The welds are infinitely more resilient. 6010, 6011 is. I'm really getting tired of this GoPro always being dead. Anyway, uh, yeah, 6010, 6011 are an especially bad choice because those welds are naturally brittle and anytime you have a lot of tension on something, especially if there's a chance it'll ever be shock loaded, that's not something you want. So if you're gonna be doing this, uh, I would do it one of the following ways. If you must MIG weld it, try to get into spray arc at the bare minimum, use a 220 volt machine, cranked up as high as you can possibly get it uh, without burning through anything on this. If you're stick welding, 7018 or don't bother. Uh, Self-shielded flux core wire, just no. Uh, dual shield flux core wire would be fine. Uh, or if you really wanna be meticulous, I suppose you could TIG weld it. But 
All right, yeah, so there, there's some do's and don'ts. Um, I mean, I'm just, I'm, it's just the way it is. These welds are very strong and resilient, the types that I recommend, and that's why I'm just gonna tell you guys straight up, don't do it with any of the other types because you do not want D-rings on anything coming off anytime there's any type of uh, load placed upon them, which is pretty much the only time they're gonna be used. So. Uh, I'm very happy with this. I hope you've enjoyed the random video. I hope you will take my advice in the way that it's meant. And, uh, you know, enjoy, have fun, stay safe. Do this at your own risk. But uh, I've never added D-rings to anything and regretted it later. I'm always very thankful that I have them on there. It, you know, it's like putting lights on stuff. That's, that's actually one of Mechanic Steve's lines. He told me once, I've never added LED lights to anything or lights in general to trailers, trucks, whatever. I never put lights on anything and regretted it. And I'm with him on that 100%. Same with D-rings. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more. Video's over. Everyone go home.